One of the things that you might have noticed is that when the rectangle gets really, really far from the vanishing point, that everything starts to look weird. This starts to look really distorted and really strange, as if instead of being parallel to each other, these are actually expanding and going further apart. And that's because we're actually um, getting too much of our field of vision into the frame. And we need to actually add a new technique to this. And what's happening is that essentially, if we have our little eyeball, and our, our eyeball in one point is looking this direction, and all of our buildings are over here, and we're all squared off, what's happening is that we're starting to look in this direction. And that's why this is looking strange, right? Because we want to see, we're here, we're seeing more of this plane right here. And we're starting to examine this corner, right? And because that gets weird, we need a whole new technique, and that is two-point perspective. So here we have vanishing point number one that we were dealing with, one-point perspective. And here we have vanishing point number two. And you'll notice that this is basically um, more or less turning into a north, south, east, west. So if you're looking northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest, you are in two-point perspective. And when I say northeast, southeast, I just mean you're looking at the corner or something. You're no longer squared off to this. So what we have to do is kind of convert this image. So we add our vanishing point one, we add vanishing point two, and now we're actually going to both simplify and complexify this at the same time. We're gonna run down to our second vanishing point, and we are going to get rid of our horizontal lines. So we've added the complexity of another vanishing point, but we've also simplified because now we no longer have to deal with horizontal lines. And the cool thing about two-point perspective is that in two-point, our horizontals are gone. For the most part, with exceptions. If you add in another object that's oriented differently, of course, then you might need a horizontal. But for the most part, you're not. You're just going to eliminate those. So we get rid of that. Um, we can get rid of that completely. So the most important thing to remember is that when you're composing in two-point perspective, that the vanishing points are going to be off the page. If you keep the vanishing points on the page, you're going to start mixing information from one point perspective, and it's just going to confuse you. The simplest way to think about this is that, um, you know, this angle right here is a 90 degree angle, right? Between vanishing point and one, between vanishing point one and two. So we have 90 degrees of space, right? Arcing our way around here. I can get very technical with this, depending on which angle you're looking at along the 90 degrees. But to simplify it, um, what my students and I kind of figured out was that if we take this distance, this is probably about three feet, and if we reduce that by half down to 18 inches, then that's a good um, space for a paper. So here, if we go from here to here, this is about 18 inches. So my composition could be something like that, right? Now, this makes it a little bit difficult, um, but what I do is sometimes I'll even, you know, tack this up on the wall or lay it down on the ground, and I'll actually put a little mark on the ground or on the wall where these vanishing points are just so I can get my setup. Once I have these two planes and my horizon line and these diagonals set up correctly and I have all of this kind of aligned, then I no longer need these vanishing points out there because I know that I can estimate where the next 
lines are gonna go just by doing stuff like this, right? Um, because I have something, I can kind of swing this angle around relatively easily. I can put this vanishing point in my head. When you're just sketching and you've got your sketchbook out, just imagine where it is. And you know, you'll get better as you, as you practice imagining things. Let's take it back uh, even further. So remember in our box drawing, if we're looking directly on a box and we're just sticking our face in it, it's a, it's a rectangle. Um, if we're looking um, at the box and it's just kind of off our point of view, then we're in one point, right? If we're focusing on the corner of the box, then we're in two points. This is why just simple box drawing is so important because it, it makes this a lot of a lot easier. Um, and then you know, the other thing too is of course we've got our three-sided box. Right? And we're still in two point. We're just looking down, so the horizon line is somewhere over here. And the other thing to keep in mind too is that here when you set this up and you have your rectangle that's gonna go above and below the horizon line, you're only working with two triangles. And that's the neatest thing. Your two triangles, you cut them off, right? So you go triangle, triangle, cut, 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 and you have a box and two point perspective, right? Make sure we put our horizon line in there for clarity. 